Hideous and smoke crawled across the floor, enveloping their feet. They floated in clouds, smelling of herbs and resins from other worlds and times. Flickering tallow candles lit the mist from beneath in a surreal dreamlike glow. A bell rang, and the Grey Sister glided in from a darkened doorway. She wore a shapeless, smoke-gray robe with dim writing in black along the hem, and around the edge of the cowl that nearly covered her ashen hawk-like face. Her sunken eyes alone shone with color, a deep underwater blue. She raised her arms and said a word, and they echoed it back. She said another word, and they repeated this one also. At her third word, the smoke stirred, and they felt a chill. They called this word back as well. The Grey Sister said a name. The congregation did not repeat this time, for it was forbidden to utter it. The next twelve words were new. The congregation repeated them as well as they could, but did not know them. The Grey Sister pointed toward the ceiling, toward the room where Jack waited above, and intoned the boy's name. Leonard paled. He knew his son was old enough today to enter the Order of the Green Flame. But this was not the rite of initiation. Why did he allow the service to be held in his front parlor anyway? The Johnsons had room in their basement, didn't they? But he had volunteered. His wife had never wanted the order to meet at their house. And now something was wrong. As the congregation continued chanting and swaying, Leonard heard a loud knock and clatter from above. It sounded as if Jack had fallen and knocked something over. The clatter continued. Jack's heels and shoulders and head knocking against the floor, arrhythmic and terrifying. The boy was having a seizure, something that hadn't happened since he was a child. It was not until Leonard heard the boy choking that he tried to leave, to go to him, but the Grey Sister's gaze held him in place. He could not move. He could only listen and regret. It seemed the boy's knockings were shaking the whole house, with the only sound Leonard could hear, and he wept. The other congregants were teetering and tipping as the floor shook, and he knew it was real and there was an earthquake. One of the robed figures stumbled against the wall, and the hem of her robe caught fire as it brushed a candle flame. The robe went up fast, catching the other's robes until the room was filled with fire and an oily, rancid smoke. The shadows of the screaming congregants danced in the middle of the room, overlapping, combining so that a thing of darkness danced there, stretching and flexing in the flickering lights spreading, taking them into it one by one. Leonard could finally move. He ran upstairs toward where his boy lay, suddenly silent, deathly silent. Panic had drained all color from his face. It was ashen and gray as the sisters. The darkness of the upper hall lived, moved, embraced him. That was an excerpt from Patchworld by Skix Maddox. That's me, Skix Maddox. I write stories of horror, sci-fi, and mystery, with a diverse cast of interesting characters. Please join me on Patreon and become one of an elite squad of backers for as little as one dollar, and help keep me, your pet author, writing novels like the ones you want to see in the bookstores and libraries. Follow this link for more.